we were talking about Blood Ties. Blood Ties was a Canadian series that lasted for two seasons based on the Tanya Huff blood books. And wait for it, Vampire Detective. Bum bum bum. Um. Technically, now technically, the woman in the show is a private investigator, former cop, who she kind of wrangles Henry the Vampire into being her assistant supernatural helper. He is technically a graphic novel illustrator. So in little, the show? Little deviance, yes. Okay. From the norm. Very much creature of the week. Kind of campy, kind of fun. I think if this were a show, you would have to be the vampire and I would be the detective. Yeah. We are on Route 146 South, heading towards Rhode Island. With nothing around us. Nothing around us. Look at you. Look at the cutest smile in the world. Yes, it's Alice at that point that we have branched off of the Dark Shadows, but we're also covering vampires in TV and movie abroad. Is you have a bright night? Oh, have you seen the new one? I have not seen I did not even know it was out yet. I love that. Fan of the original. The I saw the trailer for the new one. It looks good. It's I was a little worried. Bright Night is a classic. The new Bright Night though, excellent. Yeah. Is it? So many nods to the original. So well done, so fun. Not campy. No, it doesn't. But also I... not generic Hollywood. Allison, the vampire chick. So Allison and I are still on the road on the way to Mercy Brown Grave, last New England medically exhumed vampire. But we're also on our way to the Dark Shadows Castle, so we're mixing it up. This is our, our Rhode Island vampire road trip. Now, today being November 23rd, uh, 2011, yes, I still have not seen any of the Twilight films or read the books. I'm waiting for them to all be on video in front of me, and then I will watch it because I refuse to be in, in, put in a situation where I have to wait a year and a half to finish a story. And with this subject brought up, The Twilight, you have seen all of them, right? I have. Yes. And I've read the books. This can basically sum up my interest in Twilight and how well I feel that the Twilight books are written. Um, I read all three. I was happy and content. I was good. And then my my boyfriend says, well, you know there are four books. And I say, no, I read the last book. I read all three. No, there are four. Oh. I read one, two, and four. And I didn't care. <laughs> there were some plot points I didn't quite get. I was like, I don't remember this happening, but, eh, you know, I read them quick. I just kind of wanted to get in and see what the, the hype was about. But I was good. And I had to go back and read book three. I love that story. And that's it. It's like a love triangle, right? It's a love triangle. It gets I just really, Fanny. I, I'm not going to tell you because you have to experience it, but it gets really creepy. Like book three, it's very creepy. Well, doesn't they like have a, a vampire baby that grows too fast and yeah, stuff? Yeah, and there's some unnatural... Okay, um, did they explain that a hundred year old plus dead body can produce semen? No. We're in Rhode Island! <laughs> I haven't come across a convenience story no, though. Yeah, the last, not the last movie, the second to last movie was like watching an hour and a half jeans commercials and look at my makeup. Allison has just informed me we are in Woonsocket, Woonsocket, Rhode Island. It's, apparently they don't have convenience stores here either. We've become spoiled by gas station mini mart combinations. No, we're not spoiled because those two should never be separate. That makes no sense. But well, back in the day, you just had your. Little yeah, well, back in the day, back in the day, we could get like a gallon of gas cost sixty five cents. Yeah. But okay. Now they owe us. But now we have to look for a gas station that has a full convenience store and not just some case with some sodas in it. I'll go for a case with some sodas in it. on Interstate 295 South. The best thing that offsets the wonderful vacant um, area here with the trees and just the trees and road is the wonderful gray sky. It's a perfect fit. We're back in business. Who do you think is the sexiest vampire out there? Oh, God, there are so many. Oh, I didn't know it was a list. Yeah, I love the, the female perspective on this. The vampire genre is geared toward, I find it's geared towards uh, women. Yeah. In um, that respect, they kind of the dominant, even back 
back in the day, the Bella Lugosi, you know. Carmilla. I mean, there's not many women. There's not very many sexy female vampires out there. I mean, the Hammer films got a bunch of them, but you know, I mean. You've got a Underworld, maybe. Yes. Yeah. I was, I was gonna go there. I, I do. I do dig her. We've seen her many times. I'll show you her right now. Double doors opening up. Boom! There's the butt shot. Beautiful. Love it. <laughs> We're going a little bit low brow here before we get into the classiness. And then there's the Queen of the Damned. Which that, out, that, that outfit is just awesome. That outfit is so hot it can walk by itself in the room and it still would work for me. It's, I mean, you almost have to go as far as comic book with like Vampirella with the female vampires. I mean, no. it's Buffy, but she's a vampire, vampire slayer. slayer. It's, it's interesting. But I, I do know that there's many um, guy, good looking guys. Like Stuart Townsend did um, Lestat in a. He was a great Lestat. Blonde hair or no blonde hair, he was really good Lestat. Forever Night. Yep. Nick and Lacroix, very thank attractive. You, thank, you. thank you for the names. Uh -huh. um, Garrett Wayne Davies and Nigel Bennett. Top notch. And then you've got Julian Sands from Tale of a Vampire. Oh, Julian listen. Sands is sexy in anything. Baby. 